Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, my go-to for building a website and online shop. Hello my darlings, in today's video I'm starting yet another oil painting. I was scrambling to cram this piece in before a gallery deadline, so the entire process only took about 12 days. Yay for procrastination! I started by drawing a detailed thumbnail sketch on Xerox paper, then scanned it, then printed it at 12 by 16 inches to match the size of the panel I'm using. I then used a charcoal stick to cover the back of the print with charcoal powder, making sure to wear gloves during this step so that I can use my hands to rub the powder into the paper. Also, if you'd like to see several hours of real-time tutorials where I recorded voiceover as I was painting, along with hundreds of hours of exclusive content and monthly art rewards, feel free to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happydartist. After covering the back of the print with charcoal, I flip the print over and lay it on top of my gesso board panel. I use some artist tape to adhere the print to the panel with the charcoal side touching the surface of the panel. And now we are ready to start transferring. To transfer, I first lean the panel on a large drawing board upright on my easel so that it has a stiff backing support. I'm using a black ballpoint pen though blue works just as well, to draw over the lines from my print. I say draw instead of trace because I'm treating this as if I'm drawing it for the first time. If I blindly trace lines like a robot, I am losing a lot of the natural intuitive gestures of the form. So by approaching this step from a drawing mindset instead of a tracing mindset, I can make my transfer lines look natural and elegant. I had also printed the drawing with faded light gray lines so that my pen marks become more visible. It's also important to frequently lift up the print to make sure your transfer lines look okay, especially paying attention to whether or not the lines are dark enough. You want the lines to be dark enough to still be visible after you apply a tone of paint on top of it, which we'll do later. So if your lines aren't dark enough, it means you either need to apply more pressure with your pen or you might need to add more charcoal to the back of your print. Since this piece has such a minimal concept, the accuracy of the size and placing of the figure was crucial to making the entire composition feel balanced. So I felt like transferring from the drawing directly would be faster and more precise than trying to sketch with paint. It also saves me time because it's way easier for me to make the composition look good on a smaller drawing and then transfer that drawing versus having to trial and error my way through many attempts to finesse the measurements with paint on a larger panel. For the sake of accuracy and efficiency, I thought a drawing transfer was the best course of action for this piece, especially given how quickly the deadline was approaching due to my procrastination. After transferring and cleaning up any extra charcoal smudges with an eraser, it's time to spray the piece with fixative. I am using the Winsor & Newton Professional Artist Fixative. It is my go-to for many years, and I always make sure to do this step outside because while the fixative is relatively odorless, it should still not be used indoors. Back in the day when I lived in an apartment in the city that didn't have a balcony, I would just do this step in the bathroom with the vent turned on. Then I would close the bathroom door while the vent was still on and wait a few hours until the fixative dried and all the fumes were sucked away by the vent. It typically takes less than an hour for the fixative to dry, but I wait about two hours just to be safe. Once it's dry, you'll be able to smudge the charcoal transfer lines with your fingers and nothing will come off. This means we are ready to tone the panel. You all probably know my panel toning protocol by now, but just in case you're joining me for the first time, here's what I do. I first wipe down the panel with a Gamsol soaked paper towel. Then I quickly deposit some Bohemian Green Earth oil paint onto the wet panel straight out of the tube. I immediately use the same Gamsol soaked paper towel to wipe slash smudge the paint around the panel, ensuring a nice even tone. 
This time, when I tone the panel, I am not intending for it to become a wipeout, nor am I going to sketch with paint on top of it, nor am I going to make a monochromatic grisaille detailed underpainting on top of it. This will simply be a tone that serves to help me start my painting with a mid-value base rather than having to look at the stark, bright white of the panel. Now, it may seem like I'm doing this because I'm just so rebellious and adventurous, but in reality, I just simply didn't have time to do a monochromatic grisaille or a wipeout. I needed to start rendering right away because for the millionth time I have repeated this in this video, uh, I had a looming deadline and I had procrastinated. So I simply had to start rendering as soon as I could. I waited another few hours for the tone to dry, and then it was finally time to lay down some color. And now that brings us to the end of part one of this two-part series. In part two, coming up shortly, I'll be going over the more visually engaging step of the painting process, which is rendering in color. Thank you all for watching and for your support as always, and I'll see you guys again in part two. And of course, you guessed it, my eternal never-ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes all available at patreon.com slash happy d artist i'd love to have you join my patreon family a big thank you to squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the art community squarespace is the best platform to create a professional website and online shop their beautifully designed templates are easy to use for beginners and look great on both desktop and mobile I've sold my art through Squarespace for almost 10 years and I can attest to the quality of their online commerce features, whether you want to sell digital or physical items. They also provide useful analytics that help you make the most of your online business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash happydartist to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.